sweet, sweet caffeine. Doing your best to make me sound intelligible since my early 20s. Hi YouTube, it's Kathy and this is my weekly entertainment wrap up for November 13th through 19th. This week I read one book, I watched four shows, I watched four movies, and I listened to one book. The physical book I managed to finish this week is Love That Story by Jonathan Van Ness. This is a book of essays that comes after Over the Top, which was their fantastic memoir which I also very highly enjoyed. You could view this as a follow-up because Jonathan still has stories to tell and things to say, and I very much enjoyed reading this. This covers a wide range of topics such as the AIDS safety net in California being really good, so much so that when JVN found out they were positive they actually moved to California. Additionally, this discusses an early childhood obsession with a certain book series that the majority of us don't really support anymore, and the whole reasoning behind that author not being our favorite anymore. There are tons of other thoughts and theories and references to figure skating, because of course there's going to be. And overall, I found this a really worthwhile read. I need more of this because I did not sleep well. And that's a really good segue because the reason I didn't sleep really well is because of what we watched last night. If you've watched my last few wrap-ups, you know that we are working our way through watching House. And last night we watched the two-parter end of season four. And I had never actually seen these before, with the exception of I think I actually saw this snippet at the end of the last episode, sometime when this was on television, but because I didn't know what was going on in the episode, it didn't emotionally devastate me like it did watching it this time. So here's the thing, season four is actually a really short season, it only has 16 episodes, so I was not expecting something so emotionally devastating to happen at what I thought was like two-thirds of the way through the episode. Secondly, we watched episode 15 and it ends on somewhat of a cliffhanger and then Chad had to stop so he could go play video games with his twin online and I was just like, okay, but when you finish that I'm gonna want to finish this two-parter. So we started episode 16 a little bit after midnight, so technically I watched it today, but whatever, I hadn't slept yet, it doesn't count. And without giving too much away, this two-parter does have to do with a large traffic accident, which is already a subject that I'm uh, not the biggest fan of right now. If you watched my episode from two weeks ago, you'll know that Chad was recently in a car crash. He is completely fine, but I still get jittery about it. And at the end of this episode, a song plays, and Chad's like, wait a second, I know that song. As it turns out, when he originally watched this episode, he really liked this song, so he looked it up, found out who it was by. Years later, he was living in the Czech Republic, and he saw posters for a concert by that band, so he went to that concert, he had a really good time, he bought a CD, and do you know what CD was in his car when he was forced off the road and could have died? That one. So thinking of all of that definitely messed with my sleep. I did not get enough sleep, which is why I'm having coffee for this video. If you've seen the show and you know what happens at the end of season four, let me know. Did you cry? Because I certainly cried. This week we also finished the latter half of the fourth season of Dairy Girls because we watched the other season previously and we we're just like, oh yeah, this is the thing we were watching. We should finish it. This is always such a fun time. All of these characters are just so funny and interesting. I didn't really understand why the last episode had to be an extended episode. Episode, so I have some questions to do with that. However, I really enjoy the random misadventures these characters get up to. I am having a really good time with it and I'm wondering if there's going to be more because I will watch it. I also stayed current on this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race UK season 4. It was the penultimate episode and it was The Roast, which some people did really badly in, some people did predictably well in, and some people who should have done well didn't do very well. I don't know if I would have guessed this top four, but definitely the top two in my mind are there and as long as one of them takes the crown next week, I will be happy. Additionally, this week I watched the world premiere of RuPaul's Drag Race Canada vs. The World. So much like the UK vs. The World, this is a bunch of queens meeting up in Canada. Four of them are Canadian, two are American, two are from the UK, and one is from Down Under. I do believe that particular queen is from New Zealand, but the series is called Down Under. What I like about seasons like this is getting together with these queens that we already know, and in some cases didn't get to know enough of, because yes, Victoria Scon is back, and if she hadn't gotten injured on the first week for no reason, uh, she would have gone pretty far, I think. So it's good to see her back. It's good to see all these other queens that are also very enjoyable. However, what I don't like about this season is how the queens vote each other off, so the person that I thought should have stayed 
went home and I hated that. I'm obviously willing to continue watching but I'm really upset by who went home. As for movies, we finally got around to watching the 1992 version of Dracula. I don't think I've actually watched a Dracula adaptation before. I've watched spoofs on Dracula adaptations. I've watched a Dracula play before but I don't think I'd ever watched any of the movies and as soon as I started watching this one I knew why we were watching it because I knew what we were watching next and I'll tell you about that in a second. This was done really really well. There was some weird backstory given to it that I definitely don't remember from the book because this is one of the very few classics that I've actually read because as we know I'm not a big classics reader but I really enjoyed this one probably because it's an apostolary novel and I tend to like those. And I also really enjoyed that some people were double cast in more than one role because there's this section at the beginning that kind of sets up everything and actors that were used in that are then in the modern day or 1896 London. And then the cinematography that had to do with shadow was just so interestingly done. Now the reason why I knew we had to watch this particular one before we watched the next thing we watched is because we immediately followed that up by re-watching Dracula Dead and Loving It which definitely makes fun of the shadow thing and does it in a very comedic light and seeing them juxtaposed like that is hilarious. If you've never seen Dracula Dead and Loving It it's Leslie Nielsen. Peter McNichols plays Renfrew and I swear to god that guy never plays a normal character and I love him for it. He's always so such a weirdo and I love it. And essentially this is loosely based on Dracula but it's like a comedy version of it and I just very much enjoyed it. We watched this one last Halloween and I very much enjoyed it so it's good to keep re-watching it because apparently I was missing out by not watching this as a kid. The other two movies we watched this week we watched both in the same night and that's Aliens and Aliens 3 or Aliens Cube depending on how you look at the poster. This is the second and third in the Alien series. We previously watched Aliens so now I've watched three of these movies. And overall I enjoyed this. I finally know what the sound clip Game Over Man, Game Over is from. It's the second movie if you didn't know. However we did feel like the third movie was a little slower than the other two. It definitely didn't need to be two and a half hours. But I did enjoy seeing not only Foreman from House's dad in this but also Tywin Lannister. And both of those actors are named Charles. There are certain things I could talk about when it comes to the progression of the plot of the franchise as a whole but if you're like me me and you've never seen them before I'd love you to go into these not knowing as well because it's been so fun to be like oh yeah of course this happened and then you get to the next movie and you're like oh yeah I see why they had to do this because of this and yeah because of production and this oh and that that's a joke that Ridley Scott put in there because I think he's kind of a jackass. <laughs> The book I listened to this week is The Library of the Dead, which should not be confused with The Library of the Unwritten, which I read last week. Yes, I love my book-based books, I love my library-based books, and both of these were fun, but we're going to talk about The Library of the Dead this time around. This one is the beginning of a series. I don't know how long the series is going to be, because this one was published fairly recently. Not within the last couple of months, but fairly recently. And this one drew my eye because I knew it was set in Edinburgh, which if you know anything about me, you know that is my favorite city in the entire world. However, this is like a dystopian future Edinburgh where magic is definitely a thing and certain people can in fact talk to the dead. Our main character is Ropa. I believe she is 14 years old. She is no longer in school because she spends all of her time trying to make money for her and her family, which consists of her, her younger sister, and her grandmother, and they all live together in a caravan on some farmer's land. She essentially works as a messenger between the living and the dead. She has the ability to kind of play a little bit of music and that makes it so she can understand ghosts. And as long as one of those parties can pay, she will take the messages from A to B and vice versa. One day she comes across this ghost who can't pay her but is desperately wanting her to figure out what happened to her son because he's been missing since before she died and she still doesn't know where he is and he hasn't passed over otherwise she would have found him. And our main character is like, unfortunately I don't have time to do that type of of stuff. I have no money to support my family and I really need to do that. But eventually she does end up going on this adventure to try to figure out what the heck happened to this kid. Eventually that does lead her to this library. She does learn a little bit about magic and all of that was really interesting to me. All of that kind of theory behind different sects of magic and trying to figure out how to use magic. Putting all of that in there was kind of cool actually. 
Something I really enjoyed about this, which is particular to anybody who loves Edinburgh, is it was really well represented when it came to the character going to these different places and talking about these different things in the different places. I know nothing about this author, but I know that they know the city and that's important to me. Probably especially because I was playing this racing game that Chad has that takes place in and around Edinburgh and I was driving around in Edinburgh just doing that terribly because I cannot drive in video games at all. But I was trying to go to certain places I knew and they just weren't actually on the map like entire streets I was looking for didn't exist so the fact that this got it so right when the game is uh, fine but not super detailed that juxtaposition just played really well in the favor of this book. Like I said this is the start of a series so I do hope to continue whenever it continues as well if you like audiobooks and you like Scottish accents this is a good one to pick up because it was wonderful to hear that accent again. I'm not an expert in accents by any means but there are characters in this that have different accents that aren't Scottish and I thought they were done very well. You can take that with a pinch of salt though because I'm not familiar with the other accents that were used. I was also so caught up in the adventure of this that I wasn't even trying to look forward to see how this was going to be solved. And that is something I love. I gotta put this down so I can gesticulate. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment, but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Wow, that caffeine has kicked in. That's fantastic. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service and literally gets me coffee so I can make these videos. Speaking of, I'm not 100% positive, but I think that this might be video 997 or 998. I'm almost at a thousand. It's gonna happen either by the end of this month or early next month. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!